in music, in dance, in improv, even a game of telephone, or if we want to be super on the nose, a game of Gardic phone. There's so much fun to be had within an art form collaborating, having call and response, having someone else answer creatively a question that someone else asked. Now, wouldn't the same be fun in art, to explore and collaborate that way? Wouldn't it be fun to see how someone else answers a question that was asked by someone else? I, I said, wouldn't it be fun to answer a question that someone else asked? Yes, okay, the answer was, <laughs> the answer was yes, so stupid. Last time on Character Design Forge, we got all hyped up on creating base characters and ended up designing, 3D printing, and casting a character of our own. But not just any character, a character you can finish designing called Labco, you know, like collab. Labco harkens back to designer toys and urban DIY vinyl. Over on my website, you can freely download the JPEG, PSD, 3D model, and 3D print for free. That's at brooksegleston.com labco. And for folks that wanted a physical Labco of their own, I decided to hand make a small run of these figurines that has since sold out. Don't worry though, since I'm bringing it up in a new video, I'm going to make a second run of about half as many Labco available right now for about a week or two. A couple of pro artist friends of mine were kind enough to share their takes on Labco, and now since last time, you folks have been making some awesome Labco creations and sharing them with the hashtag Labco. So this time, I want to get in on the fun and create one myself. But f first, I kind of have to start completely over. Has anyone that ever said like, oh, this will be quick when it comes to a creative project ever been right? I I'm not complaining, I just, I was definitely wrong especially this time. So the two-part mold that I made was good, but in order to start sending these to people, I wanted to improve some things like vents for the tiny fingers. This time I'm going to use Lego, which that would have been really on theme last time. That way I'm going to make a single part mold that I split down the middle. I have multiple methods and reasons to my madness for all this. I didn't want the top of my mold to be covered in Lego studs once it was flipped over, but wasn't really sure how to make that work until I remembered that the purple plates from my unbuilt Wiggler's Poison Swamp would be perfect. Will this mold turn out okay? And will I be able to build Wiggler's Poison Swamp when this is all said and done? Using a soldering iron and some beeswax, I soft welded a newly resurfaced Labco and some vents to the plate and built a Lego wall up to the top for my silicone mold. At this point, it's very important that I tell you not to drink the blue raspberry, no matter how good it looks. So the mold will be exactly the dimension of these Lego bricks, so then I can reuse them later to reinforce the mold. Once that cured and those Lego bricks were cleaned, I split the mold with a knife and rebuilt a frame that kept the mold squeezed together. The casts from this new mold have almost no flashing or parting lines, and there's just a little bit of vent to cut away from the arms. So this is looking great, just make sure to thoroughly mix your liquid plastic unless you want a horrific half-formed abomination like this. Bro. Now I'd love to customize a Labco myself, but I just, I, I don't, I don't know, characters? I don't have any, I don't have any, I don't have any character designs to translate into labco -ese. but good thing this is a character design channel though, right? So why, why don't we, why don't we come up with a new one? This is a character of mine called Zonette, and she's this longtime warden looking after the creatures that live in a particular forest. And at one point in her design, we bid adieu to this headmaster cheetah version of her, hoping that some of those ideas could be used on a new character in the future. Fortunately for us, Zonette has recently taken on an apprentice, a rookie to this whole game warden game. The fun of designing this character is looking to include some of the same mysterious elements, the mask and serene and natural mood of Zonette, but juxtaposed with someone who's a rookie. He's inexperienced. To me, the high pants and the tie on his cowl provide those indicators pretty well. All the while designing this character, I could imagine their dynamic back and forth, and obviously the growth that he would have to experience learning, but also the growth that the reclusive Zonette would have to go through to properly train someone else. I went through a bit of a struggle really wanting to give him both the wide-brimmed hat and an umbrella as his primary tool, but having two objects with large circumferences really limited what was possible when posing this character, and it just ended up being redundant. Instead, he has a variation on the throwing sticks used by a lot of early cultures from around the world, and I think there's a hidden functionality to them too. I'm kind of happy with how the mask is clearly skull-inspired, yet those cheetah markings really throw off the visual identity a bit to make it something else. The final illustration with Kusa is one of my new favorite pieces I've done, and it's time to turn him into a Labco. 
Akusa Labco. Just syllables. No meaning to anyone, really. We're taking a character with long legs and a small head and giving them tiny legs and a huge head. If you've ever been in a situation like this where you have to repurpose a character, remember that shapes can be pretty forgiving, so it's all about proportions. We can start Kusa's pants super high up on the figure, and we're most of the way there. For me, opportunities to do something fun like customizing this lab co don't really come around too often. There's usually client work or deadlines or a big serious project that I'm working on. So the chance to paint and customize a figure is a way for me to cut loose just a little. I'm not as worried about the final outcome of this as I am just enjoying the experience, which will come in handy because the night before this video goes up, after sanding, priming, and getting a nice smooth coat of airbrushed paint onto the lab co, I thought I'd revisit my use of this masking fluid I used on Jamborella's, which was a huge mistake. Unfortunately, no matter how careful I was with it, this masking fluid pulled all the paint off of the figure when I went to remove it, all the way down to the white. And there's even little bits of the masking fluid that it couldn't get all the way off of the figure. But that's okay, right? It's just extra weathering and texture. For the extra details and hat for Kusa, I used Epoxy Sculpt. It's an epoxy clay spelled with an A. Once you mix this two-part clay up, you have a short amount of time to sculpt whatever you'd like before it hardens. This is nice because you don't have to oven bake something, especially when you're adding it on to something plastic. After figuring out the size of the hat brim, I repurposed the iced coffee cup top of Old Blue Raspberry and added epoxy clay to the outside of some foil. Once that dried, I sanded, and I sanded, and I sanded to get as smooth a surface as I could and topped it off with the admittedly goofy epoxy clay leaves. A little PVA glue on the base, and we can successfully flock with some greenery. One more new thing that I tried for this video in order to send out the lab codes that some of you lovely folks ordered, I wanted to try something similarly handmade for the packaging. So I tried my hand at rubber stamp making, which I think turned out pretty good. It definitely has that like sort of rustic handmade look to it, chunky little bits here and there, which I, I like. It's, it's a good effect. These will be going out over the next few days, and like I said, a new much smaller quantity of Labco are available at brookseggleston.com shop for now, along with the completely free files of this base character. You folks have been making some really creative decisions uh, along with your Labco designs, and it's really cool to see how someone continues to improvise or riff off of the shapes that you're giving them, kind of like a game of telephone. It's one thing to look at the blank design and go, yeah, I have a pretty good idea of how to make something from that. And then it's something else entirely to actually go through the exercise of doing it, of drawing it, of designing it. I think it's a super valuable thing to do. And if you're worried about there being like no industry application for doing something like this, like that's your only motive for some reason, not only would the whole designer toy world like to have a word with you, um, it's also a little bit like the work that happens in games, where an existing character gets a new skin, and the skeleton and animation and everything practical is the same underneath, but you're trying to make a new novel experience out of it. We talked about that in this video way, way back. Thank you for your participation in this Labco project, for those of you that have, and for all of the support of that previous video. I've been trying to up my video quality while taking a little bit more time to work on each one, and that's been way more fulfilling for me. And hopefully it's a win-win for everyone, except for the person that wants something every week, regardless of quality or, or my personal sanity. I hope you're having a lovely summer. I have some very exciting things for you coming up, especially if you missed out or weren't really feeling up to the physical lab co or we're hoping for something a little more familiar from me don't worry i can't soften the news much longer there's something incredibly exciting coming soon that will leave you in stitches it it probably won't make you laugh just the, the wordplay here is uh it's, it's pretty limiting you can get this kusa foil trading card and a glangor hard enamel pin in biko's backpack until the end of july which is like the end of this weekend. That's at patreon.com slash bagel denizen. My course Learn Character Design can be found at learncharacterdesign.com, and I'm at bagel denizen everywhere else on the internet. Thank you for watching, and have fun creating.